So welcome everyone who is joining the recording. We are meeting here for the Chaos App Ecosystem Working Group. Today is May 17. We already covered, we already talked about the blog post and next steps here. We talked about the Linux App Summit that was the last week and that we would like to get some feedback there. And right now we are working on our new persona promotions and communications team. And this is where the conversation is currently happening. We are focusing on the goal to craft a brand for the community and are discussing about the sub goals. One is to build a brand as an inclusive and healthy community. And the other is to build a strong recognized recognizable project brand. And the challenge we have right now is differentiating the two and defining exactly what, what our goals are and maybe changing some wording here. Nuritzi, did I summarize that okay? Yeah, that's great. Um, and I think the only thing to add is what we're discussing right now about how sub goal 2.2 might be more about tool choice and the first one is more about engagement choice. Um, what I had said before is that I think that building a brand is hmm, like, to me, a brand is something that when you see, you recognize what it actually, like what the product is or service and you have certain feelings associated with it. Um, and so I like, it's interesting to me how we're choosing to approach each of these, because I think that like one of our goals, like what sub goal 2.1 is trying to get at is like creating that feeling of people when they see the brand somehow associating that it's inclusive. Um, and it's, that's kind of like the, the feelings part of it in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So an example where I see this is um, Drupal, the Drupal community. I have, I have two different brands in mind here. One is the community where I, I know several people who are in the Drupal community. They're very engaged. I was part of it for a while and they have DrupalCon, they're doing a lot of amazing work. But then the other brand is Drupal as the content management system. And I think about the technical requirements that it was running the whitehouse.gov page for uh, during the Obama era and that that to me is also a brand, but more about the tool and what the project is being used for, and that's a good choice to build on, regardless of how the sausage is made, uh, the community, how the, regardless of the community. So, I think it's an interesting distinction, particularly uh, for this group, kind of being built out of. Um, out of KDE and GNOME, which, which both have, I think, many facets to their brand, uh, which is, you know, your community, as you say, of people doing conferences and having hackfests and getting together. Um, but then also, you know, your, your user-facing software, um, you know, your, your desktop or whatever else you're, you're creating, your apps and stuff. But then also, you know, the, the, the brand of, of your, um, if you're a developer ecosystem, right? Like we want people uh, building apps uh, with our technology stack. And the brands are, are, are not um, entirely independent. Obviously, um, it, uh, making one more recognizable makes the others more recognizable, right? But, but I, I think there is some distinction to be made, I guess.
I, I think so. I, I think if we if we promote GNOME or KDE as a really good desktop choice, and then we promote the all of the add-ons and plugins and the tweaks and mods and what people create for them. I, I think that appeals to a different group of people who have different needs, but it it reflects back onto the original, the, the desktop brand itself. And then if we promote the brand of the community behind the desktop, regardless of how, how good people like using the software, just how they like to engage in making the software. Maybe, maybe we're thinking a completely wrong path as well. Maybe that's not how brands work. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, because another example that I'm thinking of is that um, Google was like put on some open source event and they were talking about how they made their product more inclusive in terms of like, and brought up an example of like a camera lens that before didn't capture images of darker people or darker skin tones. And then they did some changes and now it captures a, a broader spectrum of skin tones and things like that. And so they were saying, look at us, we're inclusive and we're trying to like build along with everybody. And so it sounds like they're trying to shift their brand so that when you think about Google, you think of it as being like inclusive products for everybody. And so I think in my mind, like that's part of what we were hoping to do. Um, and that's why I said, like, to me, brand is a lot about the emotions behind it of what are people, like, what emotions are people as associating with your actual product, not just with engaging with your community. Mm -hmm. So could I summarize it as seeing the broad? Yeah, product uh, is an extension of the community or? Of the community. And so if community is diverse, then product supports diverse users mm -hmm. and use cases. Something yeah. like that? Yeah, that sounds like a good start. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. Mm hmm. Yeah, as we talk about this stuff, I'm not sure how it necessarily helps with <laughs> each of those, like the questions that we're creating for each sub goal, but because I think the questions we have are actually pretty good. You're talking about the questions here in yeah, 2.2? questions. Mm -hmm. So oh, this. Okay, sorry, this is a little messed up there. Now it works. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's keep this in mind and think about if, if we dive into 2.2, you said the questions are pretty good. So if you want to build a strong recognizable project brand, a question we have is how do people actually see the project? So how do we find out? Do we survey users? Do we 
read blog posts that people write about the project? If you have the right tooling, you might try to do some sentiment analysis on um, places where people are talking. Reddit, for example. Although there is a massive selection bias with Reddit or Slashdot or anywhere that you're looking. Um, but I mean, there are tools that do, you know, automated sentiment analysis that can pour through thousands upon thousands of stuff. And, yeah, and as we're talking about this sentiment analysis, it makes me wonder what we mean by like, how do people see the project? Because that question seems very similar to what do people associate with the project and whether people dislike or like it. So I wonder if we should be a little more specific in terms of, is this just Mm -hmm. Oh, for metric, I mean, for the disliking or liking a project, I think we also talked about like an NPS score, uh, net promoter score which is basically, or like emojis, or maybe that could have been for something else, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think we need to capture that. Yeah. I don't think we need to write anything else. Net promoter score is so well established. Okay. Um, another interesting thing is uh, for how do people see the project? I think we can look at the social listening metric, um, especially for understanding um, what people in the project are seeing or getting out of it or something like that. Um, hmm. Are you yeah, from like an internal survey? Yeah, I did I show you the social listening metric mm, before? I don't not I, I don't remember it. I don't know if it happened meanwhile I wasn't here. Okay. So in, in chaos, we have a metric called social listening. And the question it answers when we wrote it was, how does one measure the value of community interactions and accurately gauge reputation of a community as evident from qualitative sentiment? It can answer many other questions as well. Um, what it does is it takes the idea of social currency or social capital, which says that every interaction, we are trying to achieve something. When we post an issue, we want to get a new feature or we want to get a bug resolved. When we comment on it, we want to help. So every interaction has a certain meaning in what we are doing in the communities. And so if we start to collect all of those interactions and we analyze them in a certain way, then we can start to see what, what kind of things people are talking about um, and how they're seeing it. So specifically, we can build, um, we, we can see when people are talking inside the project, like transparency, do people recognize and feel a connection to the community? So in the way that they're talking, are they upset? Are they helpful? Are they helping others? Are they asking for help? Are they showing that they are, um, that they understand where 
things are happening, that it's transparent. And by the, the process is basically you take every interaction and then you tag it with, with these different labels, transparency, utility, consistency, merit, trust, which you can define. But it gives you uh, a sense in the end for how the community sees the project. And that's really then, cool. It is. Like that. And so let's say utility is very high. People are talking a lot about how easy the tool is to use, how um, how, how the features match the requirements, but there is not a lot of consistency. Maybe we need to think about, okay, how do we transfer that consistency and how we communicate and how we um, engage the community? And maybe we can leverage that, that utility to drive or, or get people more, um, I have a better impression of the consistency. Now I'm, I'm not a, and th there are ways to do it. I just, I, I recommend listening to our podcast episode where we talked about this. <laughs> um, but it, it's a metric that we have available for, and I think it would be interesting for understanding the brand. Yep. So. Um, what do people associate with the project? I am not entirely sure what we're expecting here as answers. Like, what do they associate? Do they associate people? Do they associate a certain programming language? Do they associate uh, Gamergate? Mm. I think it was around this could either speak to values or like um it could be not exactly sentiment analysis but it's more of like this is a this is a, a cutting edge project versus like this is like i don't know it, it, it in some way it's um where the project is going or i don't know words that are associated. I don't know how to say. And so I imagine that would be something like, just again, a survey with different words and people circle some or they come up with their own. I don't know. Might also be interesting to know what competing projects people associate with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I think of Drupal, I think of WordPress. If I think of KDE, I think of GNOME. But there are others as well. So hmm. might be interesting to dive into that. And that goes into this whole thing of, again, like values and how that shapes a project and community. Um, I think that a strong brand is based in values in some way. So if a community doesn't have something that's really visible, it might be hard to make sure that it's um, incorporating that into different aspects of its work and of the product of itself. I like that. Mm. 
I, I feel like we should, um, once we clean this up a little bit, um, Vinya Logan, who is one of the authors of the social listening metric, she, is, she comes from a marketing background, but has very strong footing in community work, community management. I, I think it would be interesting to invite her to a conversation about this. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Any ideas on how to address the question, how many people know about the project? It's almost like how many people are using the product? That's such a hard thing. I mean, you know, you can, I've seen lots of people use uh, stats that I think are not the most relevant, uh, but they're easy to get. And so they get them. Uh, for example, uh, stars on GitHub, you know, how many people have starred your project or forked your project on GitHub? And it, that says something, but it doesn't say everything, you know? So I, I guess things like that are some indication of well-known projects. I think they can probably distinguish between extremely well-known projects and small niche projects. But I think the uh, um, the variance, the margin of error on that is is pretty high. You know, like the difference between a five star project and a five thousand star project is probably relevant. The difference between a five hundred star and a six hundred star project, I don't think that's relevant at all. The other thing is that. I think in my mind, there's a difference with between like your users and your brand because people might not even realize that they're using your product and therefore they won't really be aware of your brand. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, you know, Gnome wants to have Gnome in front of people who aren't looking at GitHub every day, all day, right? Exactly. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have a good idea either. I guess like some metrics that go into it, I think would be like your community member base because all those people obviously know about your project. Um, and then also we could have something like social media reach or something like that, like that could factor in because if they're following your project on social media, you probably have some sort of awareness. And along with that, then if you could also monitor like the hashtags or mentions and that could factor in somehow, um, Although it could just be like the same 20 people blowing up the internet, but <laughs> I don't know, like even then there must be something around that that we could measure to see the impact that the mentions and hashtags have. I, I think that's an important um, thing we need to add here even something like website traffic. Yep. That's, it just is super clear to me that it's not super clear. <laughs> that, that this is a really difficult topic to tackle. Um, so yeah, we have one minute, one minute left. So last chance to add something. Well, I just wonder if we can leverage, as you said, like other people in the chaos community who might have more 
experience with brand in particular. They might have some other ways of looking at it that we haven't considered. Yeah. Yeah, Nicole Huseman would be great. She's also strong in marketing and open source. So what I think we're doing right now is we're structuring our thoughts. We're starting to create some, some document for to have something we can talk about and we can engage with others. So I, maybe if we clean this up, then we have um, a better tool to talk with others about and engage them. That's that's my hope. So uh, because if we just open this up right now, it's even for me difficult to dive back into it. So yeah, makes sense. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we have we have a, a four week break. We'll meet again in four weeks. Uh, by then we'll have everything forgotten. <laughs> and so we can start from scratch to uh, try to figure out what we were meaning with this and then we can hopefully clean it up next time. Okay, but at least you have a video. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, have a great time off and see you in four weeks. <laughs> yeah. Have a good, what is it? Memorial day in yeah, two Memorial weeks. Day. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. And good start to your summer. Thank you. Exciting. <laughs> All right. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.